Good morning and welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Chris and we live full time back here in this 2006 North Star truck camper and this 2001 F-250 and we're currently in the desert but we've got something different planned for today. We are leaving the camper today to go exploring on the Colorado River in our boat. Pretty exciting. So let's go check out uh, the boat and see if we got it hooked up right because uh, one time we had it come off the ball. So we're going to double check. That might have been me. So you can see our nice little setup. It's super sunny. And behind our trucklet Honda Ridgeline is our aluminum cutty boat. Might be the only one in the United States like it because we imported it all the way from Guam. I think it is. I think there was another company that was going to import them and then they quit or something. Yeah, they, there's like similar models but not this exact one. So. So we got some checks to do because we've been work camping. We haven't had this thing in the water, but we've been dragging it around through the desert. Um, so we got to make sure uh, we did put the plug back in. Uh, so that's good. The, we did charge the battery last night. The straps are still good on it. And there is enough charge for the uh, console to turn on. So maybe it'll turn over. And then I always double check this thing. Uh, we had this trailer break in half on us driving through South Carolina about a year ago and uh, this patch got fixed and it has never faltered but I always give it a double check just to make sure but uh, she looking good. And guess who's coming with us today? Do you care? Where we're going with the, these two little uh, vehicles right here is kind of over there in that direction and that's the Colorado River and we're going to fish and we're going to hopefully uh, catch a striper or largemouth bass so we can eat it for dinner. But if not, which um, I'm thinking is more likely the case. <laughs> Foreshadowing is a narrative device in which suggestions or warnings about events to come are dropped or planted. We're gonna have a fun time exploring the beautiful riparian desert meets oasis environment that we're currently lived in. And we wanna show it off because we think it's really pretty. We've been wanting to hit the Colorado River for a long time now because there are lakes that we've been interested in also jumping into like Lake Havasu and Lake Mead, which are all kind of connected and along the Colorado River. So this will be the first time dipping our toe into it. And I'm just fascinated that they put striper in the desert. They took striper <laughs> from the East Coast uh, like a hundred years ago and they brought them and they dumped them into the San Francisco Bay. Then like 50 or 60 years after that, uh, they brought them from the San Francisco Bay area and they dumped them into the Colorado River. So it's fascinating that you can catch an East Coast saltwater fish in the desert. All the way over here. And they get a pretty decent size on this side as well. I bet we won't even see one today, but it's exciting <laughs> knowing that they're there. Good girl. Oh boy. We've made it to the boat ramp and our boat lives in a Schrodinger's cat sort of state. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, it's a cat in a box with um, a radioactive atom and it's sealed and the cat lives in a dead and alive state while the box is sealed because you have no way of knowing if the cat is alive or dead until you open the box. That's the boat. We haven't started it so it lives in a dead and alive state in terms of whether or not it's actually going to um, kick over, turn on, and run, and all that good stuff. Foreshadowing as a narrative device. It's got about 4,000 miles of trailer riding. We've been dragging it through the desert now for two months, and so we've been really beating it up, so fingers crossed. Switch on. Okay, that's at least good. It made a beep, which means there is some sort of battery charge. Ooh. I'm kind of nervous because if there is a curveball that this boat doesn't start, uh, I have no idea what the plan is after that. You've got to obviously figure out what would be wrong with the boat in the middle of a desert. Here we have a very explicit bit of foreshadowing. But we do have a jump starter in case it's just a, a dead battery or a low charge battery. Oh boy, the first water since July. Moment of truth. Uh -oh. 
Uh oh. This uh, does not turn. This does not turn the motor. This does not turn the motor. Uh oh. Okay, so we hoped for the wrong thing. Uh oh. It's fine. One is having a great time. Look at all those chickens. No idea what is happening. So it starts. Um, the steering wheel does not turn the motor. what you don't think to check. What you can't prepare for. But what we did is just brought a bag of random tools in the hopes that if something did go wrong, at least we have some tools to attempt to fix it. So just the corrosion on the shaft. Bit of a loose goose now. Just a little bit looser. All right, that's it. The mighty Colorado River. We're about to touch it. We're not rock bottom. Hands are dirty. We got the boat going, and we're in the Colorado River. First time we've had the boat in the water since the Atlantic Ocean in Florida. And this is another little tick box for this boat because so far that's the Pacific Ocean and Guam. This thing's been in Lake Powell. It's been in the ocean in Florida. The Atlantic it's Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. It's been in freshwater lakes all over North Carolina and Utah and now Arizona and California. So very well-traveled little boat. I can't believe that you fixed that. So he just last minute had the forethought to just throw in the tool bag and the WD-40. WD-40 and the tool bag come everywhere. Zip ties, big crescent wrench. That's a multi-tool. It's a hammer and a, <laughs> and a wrench. That's fine though. We're out here! It's beautiful! Beautiful day. Don't know if we'll catch any fish, but fork, it's super fun exploring somewhere you've never been before, especially so geographically different and distinct as this. I love that there's these giant reeds and then palm trees. There's palm trees on the river. That's so cool. the main channel that we've been exploring is very silty uh, historically it's just a very silty river and the dam actually has a desilting station for the rest of the Colorado River downstream past the dam and we've come into this little cove that was off the main channel and it is crystal clear and uh, this just lets us know if there's actually fish or not which is kind of a cheat at the moment <laughs> But I've never seen um, water this clear as far as a lake goes. Never fished in water that's this clear. Are you our official trolling motor? We thought we saw some fish boiling. 
and then up here in the sky there's an osprey flying around he don't look too interested but we don't really know what we're doing here uh, but we thought we saw some fish movement so we're casting into it thinking it might be some striper and uh, so an osprey so just taking a chance i think we're going to be switching over to bait pretty soon and maybe just kind of drifting on the current i like working the popper or like just retrieval uh sort of fishing just because it feels like it passes the time faster than just sitting and waiting but if it's not working it's not working the big thing is we don't have a trolling motor so oh, yeah. it's very annoying fishing a boat in a little river with a lot with some current and no trolling motor it's like really hard to, to cover any ground without the motor constantly being on and somebody just sitting behind the steering wheel the whole time yeah someone has to constantly drive and put it in forward neutral forward neutral forward neutral uh and it just gets really annoying so sometimes the bait is just easier yesterday chris thought ahead and while we were in town we found a bait section of a store that had frozen anchovies. So this is what we used in Lake Powell to catch striper. And uh, we're gonna try it here, just slide some on a jig head and see if there's anything interested in it. Oh. <laughs> Where are you going? For the cuddles, dead. <laughs> All right, I think we're gonna take a just a little break from the fishing, as you've probably guessed. We've had zero luck. We've seen a handful of fish, um, but we did find this beautiful little oasis. So the Colorado River, I guess as it runs through, what we're learning is that you'll just see a, a gap in the reeds and you'll think, what's back there? And if you go explore it, it's stuff like this. They'll just be in the middle of nowhere and you're just all alone, nobody else is back here. Um, so I think we're gonna try to uh, beach the boat here against this rock, hopefully it's okay, and kind of uh, just look around a little bit because this place is, we're not catching fish, but this is too pretty to not hop out the boat for a minute and look around. Is it soft or hard? It is. Uh, what I think is rock, but it is a layer of sediment, probably from the Colorado River. Ah. Um, so it's got a little cushion. And the good news is, as you see how prepared we are, we have the incredibly appropriately sized anchor to use here. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, good girl, you ready to explore? Good girl. By far the coolest feature of this boat. Send me on my way. Send me on my way. The drone can see in this crystal clear water, and I've found a decent sized fish in the drone, and now Chris is going to cast towards it. <laughs> It probably doesn't want anything that we have, but it uh, increases the likelihood of, of catching something because right now we're at zero, so. This is some of the most difficult stuff that we've ever walked on. This hard rock right here has an incredible amount of traction. If you've ever been somewhere like Moab, off-roading or something, or even riding mountain bikes, you know how grippy this is. But what is not grippy is all the scree or all the little pebbles that are on top of this, like little ball bearings. So trying to walk up almost any of this stuff is almost impossible because it's just it's it's just like ice. It's just, it's all just slips from underneath your. There's nothing to get a footing shoe. on. And your shoes just roll. But once you get onto the hard rock, it's uh, perfect. Um, but I was just up there sidetracked. Um, you know, I pretty much figured out we weren't going to get a fish for the video today. So I bummed out about that, but what I did want to show you is my new obsession, which is, um, I don't know what kind of rocks these are, but they look organic. They're very glittery, and they're swirly and organic looking. I think it's some sort of agate, from what I can get Googling, but they're very pretty. And so I will find myself off into the desert, um, just picking up tons of these. But they're very glittery, and then they're swirled like, like coral or a 
piece of chicken fat. <laughs> when we get back to the camper, I'll show you some, <laughs> some more of my collection. But just like, you just look down and there it is. So it's, uh, if somebody has a short attention span like me, like even fishing, like if we're not catching fish, I'm like, oh, but look at those mountains. I wonder if you can walk up there. And then we beach the boat and see if we can walk up there. Um, so for some of the short attention span, it's fun to walk around the desert and look for Rocks. shiny things it's not like we're the weird ones a lot of people come here for rock collecting and the limit is like 25 pounds a day oh tell me more this is so <laughs> dangerous that's okay because i've got my orthotic in oh so now i use an orthotic device and i enjoy rock hounding how I've old really are you I don't, I don't know. I feel like my hobbies and my body is aligning with my age more and more every day. <laughs> oh, yeah, good girl. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Get your bath. Good girl. She's been very dusty and dirty. Get so your bath. I'm okay with this. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. Do the do. These bad boys are eight for a dollar. <laughs> and their diet. At the discount grocery store. Can you believe that? Eight for a dollar? You know what else is a dollar? Our lowest tier on Patreon. That's true. You can donate a dollar in support of Candy Adventures. And just for a few more of those dollars, you could get you a cool, a cool trout, a trout with a little, Butt. a little booty <laughs> riding a motorcycle. Everybody needs one of those. Looks like a dead catfish floating in here. I would have liked to have caught that. Goodbye, little oasis in the desert. We didn't catch any fish, but this is, I mean, I know that there's probably places that equal this, but as far as natural beauty, I mean, come on, even if you're not catching a fish, no wind, flat water, but you can see how immediately the water got murky. And I don't know if that has something to do with us not catching the fish or if the Colorado was just always murky like this, which I think might be the case because it's so full of sediment. Where we launched our boat just south of here might be, I'm not sure if it is or not, but it might be the most southern point of the Colorado River that you can boat with like a, a motor boat, uh, you know, a non-kayak kind of boat. I'm not sure though, but I would, I would love to put something together where we put this boat in the water all the way up the Colorado River. That would be so fun. We, we've always had it on, we've already had it on Lake Powell, um, but it would just be cool to all the way up through there, you know, you know, just explore different parts of the Colorado all the way up the chain. <laughs> who knows let's see yeah, it got up to uh we're getting nine watts right now our current solar system this stays really low uh, i don't know it's like a software glitch and if you unplug the solar and plug it back in it'll jump up to like 100 now of course right now the sun's going down and it, it wouldn't go that high so that's been a kind of an annoyance for us you always have to tend to it like you always have to be here and like plug it plug it back in yeah it'll it'll get like 20 30 watts in full sun but then you unplug it plug it back in and it jumps up to 130. so you'll lose your full day we're out filming or fishing or, or going to the grocery store or doing whatever and you'll come back and like you you wasted the whole sunlight um so we have a uh hopefully we, we've got a solution for this coming up soon um but anyway uh, we might have to run the generator a little bit tonight, but I'm going to get her food and then we'll get start working on uh, our food. So next to the truck is our weird things we've found collection. I of course have gathered bones. I am 99% sure that this is a coyote skull. And Chris just found this jaw for me yesterday. I don't know what it is. 
but it is tiny in comparison to this coyote. And then we have Chris's growing old man rock collection. And some of them have names, but he likes the ones that have these bubbles, these disturbing looking bubbles. The first one we ever found was this one. And he called it brain because it has these crazy bubbles and it kind of looks like a brain. And then the second one he found was this one and it looks like kind of chewed up chicken fat, chicken pieces like the gristle. So for dinner, we're gonna do something a little bit different. In fact, very different, something we've never done before. But being that this place feels like the Fertile Crescent or the Middle East, um, we thought we'd try some matzo ball soup or some matzo balls. We've never made this before, um, and the real reason why we're making it, not only because this uh, area looks uh, like everywhere from the Bible, but uh, that price tag right there, that's a 25 cent. So I figured for 25 cent, we'll try it. No familiarity whatsoever with uh, uh, like traditional Jewish foods, but we're gonna try this and have it with some fresh chopped carrots. Uh, so that's not out of a can. This is out of a box and it's brown, very beige, but this has some color, some pop, and then I'm going to dump this over it because we did not get a fish. I wanted to do it with fish today with a striper, but since we had no luck with that, the only thing we saw was a dead catfish, is we have this bagged shredded turkey meat from the local discount grocery store. And this stuff is delicious. And it's not all watery and it's uh, I've never really had shredded turkey meat before, but it is super good. So we're gonna have this as our meat. Might try to eat these Brussels sprouts. You can see I've had the bag open doing the sniff test. We have no refrigeration here. So when things get a little bit brown looking, sometimes I, <laughs> you know, I don't know if it's mold or if it'll make us sick. Usually I just cook it longer. Um, but some things like botulism, they, they, they don't care how long you cook it. They don't break down in heat. So we might give that a try. That's the number one ingredient on planet earth right there, whipped butter. That refrigerator is not an actual refrigerator, that's a storage pantry, so these eggs are very room temperature. We've been playing with it, see how long they'll last without refrigeration. I guess the shells breathe a little bit, so when they've been like grocery store bleach white look like this, um, that they don't last very long because they don't have any natural uh, air protection barrier on them. Um, so I don't know how long they last. I know in Europe they don't sell them refrigerated, but they also don't bleach them and clean them so well um, so that you know, nothing keeps air out. So we're, we're testing this for you. So far, four or five days seems to be pretty good and we're just gonna keep pushing it until the eggs are bad. <laughs> That's still good. <laughs> you did a sniff test on it. That's still good. <laughs> Those things are cherry, they're fine. <laughs> So you're supposed to let this sit for about 15 minutes and I guess it's to let the crackers, the, the, the ground up crackers like reabsorb the egg and the oil. So I'm probably gonna have a beer and wait for that to happen. Uh, these are our New Year's Eve beers. We did not make it to midnight. When you live in a camper all the time and it gets dark outside, the day kinda is over. So you don't make it super late. So we didn't make our New Year's Eve beers. So they will be my matzo ball hydration beers. <laughs> I got these instead because I like fun frou-frou drinks. Beer's fine too, but if I had to choose, I like more fun stuff. And these are really, really good. So the box said your hands are supposed to be as moist as you can get them. Uh, so I got my hands super moist and you're supposed to make them about the size of a walnut. I've never had these, but I am a massive fan of chicken and dumplings. And this seems very similar. Mm. All right, so we're just gonna cover that up with this pot because we don't have lids to our pots and it said to cover it. I don't know why, uh, if that keeps in the steam or what the reason is behind that. So we're just gonna cover that up and let that simmer for 30 minutes. It's all about the presentation. <laughs> it makes me think about like, well, why don't we barbecue a turkey and uh, grill it like pulled pork or something and then shred it up and season it that way like because that's what this is and it's so good I'd, I'd never even thought about barbecue and turkey that way so they are uh, definitely hot brown and the the thing is I don't know what they're supposed to look like or be 
so this is very exciting but they did keep in ball form um i did not use enough water you can see almost all the water is gone and has been soaked up into these i think you're supposed to have like a soup um with this but they are very fluffy i did try one off camera very fluffy cloud-like pillows of carbohydrate which is that means you did it right because it says that sometimes they can come out rubbery they're definitely not rubbery they are very light very international dish here uh, you know turkeys turkeys are native to the new world matzo balls are from the old world carrots are from the old world brussels sprouts are a f in the same family what is like a cauliflower and broccoli i think cabbage i think all those plants stem from the same genetic ancestor i'm pretty sure here we go whoa it's so colorful what do you want me to try first i want to try the matzo balls i've never had them either so i have no idea what they're supposed to taste like it is very similar to chicken and dumplings but it is fluffy it's nowhere near as dense no, it's as not. a dumpling from Chicken and Dumplings. Yeah, nowhere it's, near as dense. It's airy like a cake. Like it, there's little pockets of air. That's very spongy. But not rubbery. Very good. I bet why those they put them in soup is because that matzo ball probably absorbs the broth flavor. So I bet if you did that in any sort of broth, it'd be really good. And then this meat is delicious. Two thumbs up. I'll do them one at a time because I'm filming with the other hand. Two thumbs up there you go. <laughs> for the matzo balls. We'll try that again. Definitely worth 25 cents. Very, very good. Now I am going to smash mine like a dog Dagestani fighter. I'm gonna smash your boy. And then I have the hot water heater turned on. I'm gonna grab a hot shower and we'll see you guys next video. Thanks for watching. Hope you found the Colorado River as beautiful as we did. It was uh, fun to explore for the first time and see you next time. Ciao, Bella. Send me on my way. 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 Send me on my way.